Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, as usual, is a mixture of machining, uh, repairing things. I also go down to Richard's and we'll do a bit more work on his Sentinel steam wagon. Uh, I'll show quite a bit of that. It's starting to get to the stage now where it's going to be interesting. Um, the body will be coming off and the engine will be coming out and I'm sure I'll be a, some opportunities for some very good video of that. When I was at Richard's, he gave us this rather tatty looking instrument case. You'll be surprised to see what's inside there. I'll open that later. An update on Deb and my dad. Uh, Deb's is okay, so it's basically just the same. She's just plodding on, waiting for the, the end of her treatment. Uh, my dad's doing okay. He's waiting to go to hospital for a small operation. Uh, hopefully everything's going to work out great for him as well. It's been a strange week across here. We've had some really horrendous weather. Gale force winds and a colossal amount of water has fallen. Um, that's some really bad flooding in the west side of the country. A lot of people have lost their houses. Rivers have burst their banks. There's a friend of mine at work. His daughter has a pub not far from here. And the, the river burst his bank and the pub's flooded up the waist deep in water. And they've just taken over the pub and they've just had it re refurbished. It's absolutely heartbreaking. The devastation this has caused. I haven't heard of any loss of life yet, but it really is, it really is bad. A few weeks ago, a friend gave us a set of slip gauges. I showed them on one of my nightcaps, uh, how they were pitted, and I asked for advice on cleaning them. One of my viewers, a lad called Craig Osset, that's Craig's card there. Kindly offered to clean them for us and recalibrate them for us as he has a company that specialises in calibrating measuring instruments. I sent them away to Craig and they've come back today. That's a nice cloth. I would imagine it's a cloth for wiping things clean for cleaning. The slip gauges, it's also got some sort of anti-corrosion property, I would imagine. Right, we'll have a look and see what's in here. He did say he had a couple of large milling cutters for us as well. And certainly are big milling cutters. Brand new as well, it's a one inch cutter. I need to make a hold up of these. Absolutely brand new, excellent. Dormer as well, Dormer's good stuff. They certainly get put to good use. Right. Quite an interesting chart here, it's got all the, the calibration sizes and the deviation from the standard that he the standard that he checks them against. I've actually got some pictures of the calibration process and how he cleaned them. I'll put them up in a bit of video.
all the rust certainly gone. The surface pitting still there, there's no way to get remove that, but the, the nasty surface rust gone. And they do stick together like they're supposed to stick together, you twist them together and make a stack of various various sizes. See all the work will stick together because the surface finish is that good when you twist them together you're removing all the air from in between them and the atmospheric pressure is actually keeping them pushed together quite clever stuff I'll possibly do a bit of video showing how to use these this is the case my friend Richard gave us uh, yesterday when we were working on his steam wagon. The case is a bit tatty but when you open it up it's in nice condition inside. It's a lovely depth gauge, 30cm, 300mm depth gauge, a vernier type made by a company called Roach. Uh, it's French. It doesn't look like it's been used at all. There's no, no wear marks on it at all. No corrosion. It's in real good condition. What I did find very interesting, you lift a little tag here. And there's actually a certificate there, and the date, 21st of the 8th, 1962. Right, thanks once again Richard, that's great, it'll be put to good use. I have got a, got a smaller depth gauge than this. See a much smaller one than I bought a, a car boot sale. That one's more than right. Got a nice, feels nice. I've got a job here from work. It's a constant velocity joint, or what they call a CV joint. It's actually a four wheel drive Mazda pickup. Uh, I had it car in to, to date, I have a drive shaft boot change, that's a, a rubber gate that goes on there to protect the joint. This goes through a splained hub and it was absolutely sea solid in the hub. I mean, you start off using a brass drift and you tap it, and you end up using a, a big hammer and you break it. In the end of this all went bell ended, all swollen up. I've tried my best at work to dress it off, ground the damaged thread off and try to repair the, the thread with a thread file to get the nut to start and I've cut the thread back that far, it's actually running short the thread now like length of thread and that is actually still, it's still swollen up there it was, I really hit this there's one or two ways of fixing it one way is to machine the threads off, weld that back up and recut the thread again the problem with doing that is, this material goes really hard when you weld it, it goes brittle in fact, uh, more or less impossible to machine. At the minute it's not too bad, it's not soft by any stretch but it is, it is machinable. So what I think I'll do is I'll machine this down from 22mm that it is now to 20mm and cut a new thread on there, a 20mm thread. All the nut does is keep that held through the drive flange. The splains do all the driving. I've got a drive shaft nut here that'll do the job. And that thread there, I've measured the thread and it's 20 mil by 1.5 pitch. See a thread gauge in there, 1.5 pitch. So I'll turn that down to 20 mil and screw cut it 20 by 1.5. First thing to do is we'll set it up in the four jaw chuck, clock it into here. And then I'll try and recover the centre so we can use the centre to support the back end of it. I've set the jaws up roughly to the diameter of the piece and just use these, these lanes for reference to get it somewhere near. And keep it 
pushed pushed back onto the face of the chuck right we'll get it somewhere a bit narrower than that before you even start with the clock as you can see that's quite a way out so it wants to go come across to me getting better to me some more right now what's within the the realms of possibility so to speak Make sure it's nice and tight against the face of the chuck. Right, that's a high point there. So loosen off opposite. Tighten that one. You always tighten. High there. Loosen. Tighten. Right, we're getting near. Right, I hope you can see that clock gauge there. It's, it's difficult to video a clock gauge. You get a little reflection off the face. Find your high jaw, which is that one. Tighten that one. So you always tighten. In between those two. Right, that's near enough for what this is going to be. Any better than that, I've got a clock here to do in the inside in. I always get it right with that one. Decent material this. Right. We established the centre or created a new centre, whichever way you want to look at it, we've got a centre well there now anyway. People often ask us why I've got me blade top side, the compound side, set at an angle. It's set at an angle basically for screw cutting, but also it's set at an angle because it's stronger and it gives you more room. You can see what's happening here. Compound side is actually hitting the blade tail stock. I could simply move the tail stock further back, but the best way is to put a little bit of angle on the compound side 
which we'll need anyway to do the screw cutting. We're cutting a 60 degree metric fade, so the compound slide wants to be set at 30 degrees. So that's 90, so that's 10, 20, 30. Which is there, it's actually 29. This also puts a tool near the centre of the carriage which makes it a lot stiffer. Right. Here you can see you can see now we've got all the room in the world. Measure twice. Measure twice and cut once. We we'll try a different tool. That's pretty horrible. That. Make that stout the size. It's actually 20.4, which is the size I measured on the inside of the nut there you can see where it's being relieved. What I want to do now is put a little radius in there. It's for the screw cutting tool to drop into. Also a radius in there actually makes it a lot stronger than a, than a sharp edge. Taking a quite a big cut here with a that'll do for me. 